I am the program coordinator for this program, and I hope that I'm able to share some interesting new information about study abroad in general, um, about Paris itself, and uh, about this particular program. So, to get right started, the history of this program is kind of unique. It was established in 1969, and it is the oldest undergraduate overseas French program in the SUNY system. So uh, if you join this program, you'll be part of a strong history of French studies in Paris through SUNY. And the main, uh, main event of this program is the Cœur de Civilisation Française de la Sorbonne, so the Sorbonne Language School, which many people are familiar with. It's a very renowned institution and great for learning French over in Paris. And this program is special because we do have a SUNY resident program director named Celine Gorelli, who uh, will be overseeing every detail. So you have someone on site who works for our office at SUNY, uh, who knows SUNY, knows SUNY students, and um, really is there to make sure the program goes as smoothly as possible. So maybe you know a little bit about Paris, or maybe you don't yet, but some of the ins and outs about Paris. It's separated into 20 different neighborhoods, which are known as arrondissements. So if you don't know the way Paris is set up yet, you'll quickly learn. Um, it starts in the center where you see that little triangle pyramid, which is the pyramid actually behind me in this photo, uh, in front of the famous Louvre Museum. And so right in the center of Paris is the first arrondissement and you can see it spirals outward to the outskirts of the city. And this is how people really orient themselves um, and talk about their particular neighborhoods. So people are really attached to their particular arrondissement and certain areas are known for different things. So you'll start to learn this as well when you visit Paris. And uh, as a true Parisian would, you'll start to navigate the city by which arrondissement you are in and headed to. Um, Paris is large but it's also really well connected with buses, the metro, trains, there's actually 500 plus kilometers of bike lanes and there are over 450 parks and green spaces in Paris so it's a really you know different city you've got a lot of green space a lot of old cobblestone walkable streets now you've got bike paths along the Seine so you'll see uh, a lot of different ways to get around and explore your new home. So the City of Lights, I'm sure you've heard of at least some of these tourist attractions in Paris. Some of the popular destinations would include Notre Dame, the Cathedral, um, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, like we talked about, which is home to the Mona Lisa, for example. Um, the Montmartre neighborhood, which is where all of the artists, especially, you know, Picasso, for example, you can visit uh, where he used to live, Salvador Dali, um, famous artists from the times, all living in the Montmartre neighborhood, which is also where the Sacre-Cœur, big uh, cathedral, is located up on the hill. Uh, the Moulin Rouge, of course, also in Paris. The Pont Neuf, which is a famous bridge crossing the Seine River. It's the bridge where people put the locks with their initials and little messages of love. So sometimes it's known as the Love Locks Bridge. Um, L'Arc de Triomphe, which is the large stone arch at the end of the Champs Elysees, of course, which is the long designer shopping avenue that Paris is famous for. It takes about 135 minutes to walk from the north to the south of Paris. So it's a big city, but it's a very navigable, walkable city as well. So why study in Paris? There are over 23 or, or 23 universities. It's a hub for international students from all over the world. So not only are you going to be on this program with students from other SUNY schools, but you're going to be with students coming from all over the globe. You will be studying in French or in English. Um, everyone on the program will learn a little bit of French at least, and that's pretty cool because French happens to be the second most spoken language in the world after English. Um, and Paris is really well connected to other destinations in Europe by bus, train, airplane. So if you've got a lot of big European cities and countries and destinations on your bucket list, 
um, consider Paris. And really, we shouldn't even limit it to Europe because, you know, Africa um, and other destinations, um, Turkey, you could get really anywhere you're trying to go very quickly. So the resident director of our program who makes this program what it is, is Celine Gorelli. So she uh, is there for your 24 seven support. You can see her in that photo with students right in the center waving. Um, she is from start to finish a huge part of this program. I am in constant communication with her in Paris to make sure that everything is running smoothly. She will be there at the airport to pick you up and bring you to your housing. She runs an intensive orientation program upon arrival. Um, she also is going to teach a course on the program. So she's also a professor. So she'll teach the director's course either in English or in French because she speaks both fluently. Um, she's been the director of the program for over 10 years. She's very familiar with SUNY, with SUNY students and she's been to visit our SUNY schools several times over the years as well. So a little bit more about her director's course. Everyone on this program will participate in the director's course. So it's a three credit course. You can take it in French or in English and Celine will teach this course. So it's gonna be a course a little bit more in depth about the history, the politics, the development of France, of Paris, of Europe. It's always a little different every semester based on the interests of the group. But this is a great course for political science credits, history credits, global credits, French credits if you're taking it in French. Um, and you can see some of the important topics discussed here on this slide. Not only is this course really interesting to learn about where you're now living and located, but since everyone in the classes or everyone in the program is taking this class, it also offer, offers a nice opportunity for the SUNY students to get together once a week check in, see what's going on with one another, because there are multiple tracks or options. So some students will be focusing on learning French, some taking courses in English, some participating in internships. So this is also a nice time to bring all the SUNY students together and check in and have that time together. So like we were saying, you can either participate in a semester or the summer version of this program. In this semester, no matter whether you're doing French immersion, English, or internship, everyone will take at least six credits of French courses. So if you're a beginner, that's totally fine. You can take 101 and 102. Um, but that's a staple part of this program and really helpful to navigating your time in France. Uh, the three credits coming from the director's course, of course. And then the last three to six remaining credits will correspond to your major, your minor, whatever you're interested in studying in Paris. Um, if you're taking an internship, those remaining credits will be going towards the internship. Um, and if you're fo focusing on taking coursework offered in English, that's where you would be taking that coursework in English, whether it be political science in English or creative writing in English. Um, there's a lot of different options throughout the universities in Paris that we can set you up with to take coursework in English. If you participate in the summer program, there's more of a focus on language and culture. It's just six credits. You're focusing on French, the language, the grammar, the maybe a global studies or French history type credit going towards it, depending upon your level. Um, and it's usually one month long program for the month of June. There are internships available in the summer, but you do need at least five semesters of college French behind you or the equivalent, maybe sometimes, you know, students have taken French in high school or they grew up speaking French, so they're familiar with the language. We're looking for upper intermediate um, proficiency in French for that summer internship. And during the semester, we're looking for a background of about four semesters of college French, though a little less because you're gonna have a lot of support during the semester um, and more time to develop your language skills over the semester. So again, either program is great for both beginners, intermediate, or advanced. If you do take the internship in Paris, uh, it's a really great thing to consider because we do work with EUSA, which is Europe's largest internship placement organization, and we can help provide placement in all different indus industry sectors. So we've worked with NGOs, um, we'll work with, um, I had a student in an art museum, 
so really all across the spectrum placements. It'll be just eight weeks of the semester, so not the full semester. You'll have some time to integrate into the program before starting your internship. Um, it'll happen four days a week with Fridays off. And this is a great time to grow your skills, grow the competencies and things that you're getting ready for your career, get that resume boosted, um, and really actually be able to say, I have professional work experience, I have global work experience. Um, it shows a lot about who you are as an individual, how independent and adaptable you can be, and it really gives you a chance to get ahead. Um, one of the most special things about this internship option would be the opportunity to participate in the mock interview at the end of the internship, which many students have said was the most helpful um, interview preparation tool that they've had. So that really got them ready to what it will be like going out and job hunting when college is over. For housing on this program, we have a few different options that we offer. Uh, we have the Fundacion des Etats Unis residence, which is located in that main photo there with beautiful gardens surrounding this residence, public transportation stop right in front of the residence, single rooms, um, an opportunity to meet different students from all over the world as it's part of um, a grouping of buildings of different country students. So this is the US house, but next door will be the Belgian house and the Mexican house. And there are still French students who are also located in these housing uh, residences. So it's a great way to have a really international community um, with also that feeling of being comfortable in the residence, having some staff who understand English and can, uh, and can help you with whatever you need. Foyer Dido is a little more traditional French residence. That's that green furniture that you see there. Um, a lot of our internship students, students who are really focusing on their French language skills, might choose this residence hall um, as it is a little bit has a, a little bit higher French proficiency required to navigate there um, and interact with the French students who are a little bit more professional students, maybe more um, older French students or just traditional kind of French housing situation. And the Foyer International, which is also where the director's course will be held. That's that beautiful library that you're seeing there. So it's a really great historic building with rooftop access to views of the city. It's a, actually a female only dormitory and limited to students who are participating for a full year. Uh, but I like to include it here as well because you will be in this building and be able to visit this building as a part of where the director's course is being held. So it's really a great aspect of the program. And if you're interested in a host family, we also work with a great agency to pair students with host families that fit what they're looking for. So if being away from your family dog for the semester is really tough, you can request a host family that has a dog or pets in the home. Um, so keep in mind a host family is a really great, great way to get connected with the Parisian way of life, try some French food, um, and create connections and relationships with French people that can last a lifetime. So if you're considering the program and you're th thinking, what do I do next? You can apply online. You, um, it's a free application right through our website, through the program brochure page. You need to have a 2.5 GPA to participate in this program. Be at least a sophomore in standing. So once you've completed your first year, you could participate that summer uh, and going forward. The deadlines for spring are usually October 15th and the deadlines for fall, uh, April 1st. You will want to start to meet with financial aid and discuss your aid package and what you have available and how it will work with this program. And for that purpose, we have budget sheets online, which you can view to help guide that conversation and see what costs are uh, looking like for this program and how they, they mesh with the aid that you have. Many SUNY scholarships, grants that you have will be applicable while studying abroad. I want to check with your financial aid advisor to see if the funding that you have is still applicable while you study abroad as well. And in addition, we want you to start looking for additional scholarships to help you study abroad. So check with your home campus to see what study abroad scholarships are available for you to apply for. Um, but also start searching the web. We have a great section on our website 